Hello, everyone. My name is Guo Song Yang. I'm a postdoc in the Center for Control Dynamical Systems and Computation at the University of California, Santa Barbara. Today, it's my pleasure to present our work on topological entropy of switch nonlinear systems. This is a joint work with my postdoc advisor, Joao Hashpania, and my PhD advisor, Daniel Libzo, from University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Our interest in topological entropy is strongly motivated by the question of how much data rate is needed for control over communication. Here is a basic diagram for feedback control over a digital communication channel. In this control system, sensor collects information about the state or output of the plant. This information needs to be encoded before they can be transmitted through the digital channel. And the received transmission needs to be decoded to generate control input for tasks such as civilization or ensuring setting variance. An important question for such a digital control system is how much data rate is needed for feedback civilization or other control tasks. The answer to this question is described by the concept of topological entropy and its variance. Topological entropy is a non-negative number that measures the complexity of a of a dynamical system. Roughly speaking, it measures the exponential growth rate of the number of distinguishable trajectories as time evolves. Next, I will briefly summarize some literature on entropy notions in system and control that are closely related to our work. Topological entropy was first defined for discrete time autonomous systems in the 1960s by Adler and others. Our work follows an alternative definition introduced in the 70s by uh, Bowen and independent Ledina work. In this definition, uh, it utilizes the minimal number of trajectories needed to approximate all trajectories with an increasing precision. Clearly, there is a connection between this definition and the beta rate requirement for encoding the state information. We will explore this connection in more detail on later slides. Topological entropy has also been studied for non-autonomous systems defined by a sequence of maps. Recently, the effect of switching behaviors on topological entropy were studied for switch linear system by our group and the group of Professor Raphael Younger in Belgium. This concept also played an important role in control theory, where many related notions of entropy has been defined to study the data rate requirements for tasks such as feedback civilization or state estimation. Now I will define topological entropy for a continuous time autonomous system on RN, with initial states joined from a known set K. The initial set K is assumed to be compact with a non-empty interior. We denote by Ksi Tx the solution to this system at time T with the initial state X. To define topological entropy, we first picked a norm, a non-negative time horizon capital T and a positive resolution epsilon. Eventually, we will let capital T goes to infinity and epsilon goes down to zero. Also, the value of topological entropy will be the same for all norms on Rn. Next, we define the notion of T epsilon spanning sets. The inequality here means that the distance between these two trajectories are less than epsilon over the interval from zero to capital T. In other words, the trajectory starting from X, which is the green one here in this plot, is within a tube of radius epsilon around the trajectory starting from the initial condition X bar. The red, uh, the red line in this spot. If the system is unstable and the distance between trajectories are increasing, this inequality requires that the initial condition X is within a distance less than epsilon from the initial state X bar. This condition is represented by this solid red circle in this plot. A set E is T epsilon standing if the union of the corresponding circles about its elements covers the entire initial set. 
In other words, for any initial state x in the initial set k, there is an x bar in E such that the distance between the two trajectories are less than epsilon over the interval from zero to capital T. Next, we denote by S epsilon T k, the minimal cardinality of a T epsilon spanning set. Roughly speaking, S epsilon T k uh, describes the minimum number of trajectories needed to approximate all trajectories from the initial set k with an error less than epsilon over the interval from zero to capital T. Suppose that the system is unstable and the distance between trajectories are increasing. Then for a longer time horizon, the initial state x and x bar needs to be closer so that their trajectory are still within a distance epsilon over the longer interval. Consequently, the red circle in the plot becomes smaller and we need more of them to cover the initial set k. Therefore, the minimum cardinality of a t epsilon spanning set S epsilon tk is increasing in the horizon t. It is also clearly decreasing in the resolution epsilon. The topological entropy of this system is defined in terms of the exponential growth rate of the minimum cardinality S epsilon tk. In this definition, roughly speaking, we let the time horizon t go to infinity because we are interested in the long-term exponential growth rate. We also let the resolution epsilon goes down to zero to get rid of the differences between different norms. In terms of control systems, we can think of the T epsilon spanning set as a set of uh, quantization points so that the quantization error is less than epsilon. Then log S epsilon TK corresponds to the minimum number of bits, uh, bits needed to specify one of the quantization points. Consequently, the topological entropy H corresponds to the uh, minimum data rate requirement for quantization. The topological entropy is clearly non negative by definition. In this talk, some of our entropy bounds on the slides can yield negative values. In these cases, the actual bounds are the maximum of the formula on the slide and zero. In, for linear time invariant systems, there is an explicit formula for topological entropy, which is the sum of the negative real parts of eigenvalues, including repeated ones. It turns out that this is also the formula for the minimal data rate needed for feedback civilization. This equivalence further illustrates the connection between topological entropy and the data rate requirements for control and motivates us to study topological entropy for more complex systems. In this paper, we study topological entropy of switch systems. In a continuous time switch system, the system dynamics switch between multiple modes the switching is described by a piecewise constant switching signal so that sigma t is the active mode at time t. We denote the solution to the switch system in a similar form as before. Note that here, the state is driven by the first active mode P1 until the first switch T1. Then it's driven by the second active mode P2 until the second switching time T2 and so on. From the definition of topological entropy, it clearly depends on the distance between solutions. Therefore, we first construct a bound for the distance between solutions to the switch system. An important notion we use to construct a bound is the measure of a matrix defined here. From its definition, the matrix measure can be seen as the right-hand derivative of this norm of matrix exponential when t equal to zero. In particular, uh, the measure of a matrix is always between the real part of its eigenvalues and the uh, induced norm of this matrix. The matrix measure can be negative, which makes it a better choice to construct entropy bounds than common choices such as the Lipschitz constant. For a linear time varying system, 
there is a well-known bound for the norm of solutions. Here, the exponent is a time integral of the measure of the system matrix. In proposition 2.5 of our paper, we construct a bound in a similar form for the distance between solutions to the switch net linear system. Here, the exponent is a time integral uh, of the measure of the Jacobi matrix of the active mode along trajectories of the switch system. The proof of uh, this result relies on the so-called variational method. More specifically, we first write uh, this distance as an integral of Jacobi matrix over the line segment connecting them. Then we write the Jacobi matrix as the state of a linear time variance system and apply the above bound to uh, obtain the bound in proposition 2.5. We also constructed a similar bound for the volume of the reachable set of the switch system. Due to time constraints, please refer to the paper for more details about this bound. For switch systems, we consider the topological entropy defined for a fixed switching signal. The definition is constructed in a similar way as before, except the solution follows a different mode after each switch. Here are some quantities about switching that are useful for computing topological entropy. The first quantity is the active time of a mode P, which is the total time that mode P is active over the interval from zero to T. We also define the active rate of mode P as the percentage of time that mode P is active over the same interval. It's limited supreme is defined as the asymptotic active rate of mode P. We note that the sum of the active rates over all modes always equal to one. On the other hand, the sum of the asymptotic active rates over all modes can be larger than one. In our previous work, we studied topological entropy of switch linear systems. First of all, we constructed upper and lower bounds for the topological entropy of a general switch linear system. These bounds are in the form of uh, asymptotic averages of the measure or the trace of the system matrices, weighted, uh, weighted by the corresponding active rate rho p. In this paper, we aim to generalize these bounds for the case with nonlinear modes. We also constructed an exact formula for the case uh, for topological entropy when the system matrices are pairwise commuting. Furthermore, we established some informative connections between topological entropy and stability. For example, we know that a, sta a stable system always has zero entropy, but not vice versa, that is, it's possible for a system to have zero entropy, but is still unstable. Our previous results showed that when we apply a destabilizing perturbation by adding a delta i with a positive delta to the system matrices, if the topological entropy is still zero, then the original switch system must be stable. This method has led to normal stability conditions based on our entropy bounds. Here is one of the main results of our current paper, an upper bound for the topological entropy of a general switch nonlinear system. The entropy bound is in the form of an asymptotic average of a constant n mu hat p for each mode p, weighted by the corresponding active rate. The constant mu hat p is the supremum of the measure of the Jacobi matrix of mode p over the omega limit set. The fact that mu p only depends on uh, mode p in the omega limit set instead of the entire state space or compact invariant set is an important improvement over most existing results on the topological entropy of nonlinear systems. These features means that if we know some upper bounds for the measure of the Jacobi matrices, 
or a compact set that contains the omega limit set. We can derive upper bounds for the constant mu hat p without knowing the switching signal. Then it's very convenient to compute our entropy bound once the active times are given. The proof of this result consists of three major steps. First, we provide a standard construction of spanning sets based on a notion of grid. And we use this construction to establish an upper bound for topological entropy in terms of the exponential growth uh, eta bar t of distance between solutions. Second, we substitute the previously uh, obtained bound for the distance between solutions into the entropy bound obtained in the first step. In this way, we obtain an entropy bound in terms of a time average of the measure of the Jacobi matrix of the active mode along trajectories of the switch system. Finally, we establish a lemma on the asymptotic time average of a family of integrable functions along a switching signal. In this way, we are able to separate the coefficients of the system dynamics and those of the switching. Uh, in this way, we obtain the entropy bound in theorem 3.1, in which the constant mu hat p only depends on the Jacobi matrix of mode p over the omega limit set. We also construct a lower bound for the topological entropy of a general switch nonlinear system. Similar to the previous bound, upper bound, it is also in the form of an asymptotic average of a constant uh, chi check p for each mode, weighted by the corresponding active rate. The constant chi check p is the infamous of the trace of the Jacobian matrix over the omega limit set. The proof of the lower bound relies on the previously obtained lower bound for the volume of the reachable set of the switch system, as well as the lemma for separating the coefficients of system dynamics and the coefficients of the switching. Due to time constraints, please refer to the paper for more details about this lower bound for topological entropy. Additionally, we construct more conservative upper bounds for the topological entropy that require less information about switching. The first upper bound here is an average of the constants uh, mu hat p, weighted by the corresponding asymptotic active rates, rho hat p. We note that this bound depends on the asymptotic active rates instead of the active rates, like the bound in theorem 3.1. The second upper bound here is a maximum over the constant mu hat p, which does not involve active rates at all. In particular, if all mu hat p are replaced, are replaced by global upper bounds for the measure of the Jacobian matrices of the corresponding mode, then the second upper bound here is independent of switching. The upper bounds in corollary 3.2 are more conservative than the one in theorem 3.1. As will be illustrated in a numerical example, neither of these two upper bounds are more conservative than the other. In this paper, we also consider the case with diagonal modes. That is, the S scalar component of the system dynamics only depends on the S scalar component of the state. For this case, we are able to take advantage of the additional structure and construct tighter bounds for topological entropy. Due to time constraints, please refer to the paper for more details about this case. Now I would like to illustrate our result numerically by an example of a switched Lockta Volterra ecosystem. In this switch system, each mode is a Lockta Volterra model that describes the population dynamics of n species in a biological community. The dynamics consists of a linear term and a sum of n quadratic terms. Here, the non-negative state xi is the population density of the s species. The linear coefficient rip 
represents the intrinsic growth rate of the S population. The self-interaction term AIIP is negative, which models the limitation of resources in the environment. The interaction term AIJP uh, describes the influence of the JS population on the S1. Switching in such an ecosystem may be due to seasonal changes or other environmental factors. For example, some species are more fit in the summer, while others are more fit in the winter. In our numerical simulation, we consider a switched locked out Terra system with two species and the following two modes. In the first mode, the first species, uh, the first species diminishes while the second one thrives. The opposite happens in the second mode. These are typical trajectories of mode one, which has an attractor 0, 2, and a saddle point at the origin with the stable manifold being the negative x1 axis. In other words, x1 will always convert to zero, while x2 with a positive initial value will convert to two. These are typical trajectories of mode two, which has an attractor three zero and a saddle point at the origin with the stable manifold being the negative x2 axis. In other words, x1 with a positive initial value will convert to three, while x2 will always convert to zero. Based on the results from a 2011 paper by uh, Alexandrov and others, the omega limit set of this switch system is always con contained by uh, uh, the compact set omega defined here. The set omega is represented by the gray triangle Oh, sorry, by the green rectangle in the plots. Therefore, we can compute the, constraint, uh, the constants related to system dynamics in entropy bounds over the simpler set omega. We note here that the set omega is not positively invariant. These two trajectories in the plots leave omega at one point and re-enter it later. The first switching signal we consider is to switch periodically. The corresponding uh, asymptotic active rates of both modes are 0.5. These are typical trajectories of the resulted switch system. Recall that in each individual mode, one of the species goes extinct. Meanwhile, here, by switching between the two modes, we can prevent extinction and keep the population densities in a certain region of the state space. This model has been used to study the coexistence of animals with different seasonal advantages. In such a switch system, topological entropy describes the data requirements for monitoring the population densities so that control can be applied to keep the population densities in a healthy range. The second switch signal we consider is to switch whenever the active rate of the active mode reaches 0.9. The corresponding switching times increase geometrically and the asymptotic active rates of both modes are 0.9. This is the typical trajectory of the resulted switch system. The trajectory can get arbitrarily close to the origin, meaning both species will face extinction. Here is a table of the, top of the upper bounds for topological entropy we constructed in this paper, computed for the two switching signals here. For simplicity, the constant mu hat p in the entropy bounds are computed by maximizing over the simpler uh, set omega. These entropy bounds can potentially be improved by using better approximations of the omega limit set. From the table, we see that theorem 3.1 yields a smaller bound in both cases. Meanwhile, the first bound in corollary 3.2 is smaller than the second one in the first case, but it's larger for the second case. Also, the second bound of corollary 
is the same for both cases. These results are consistent with our previous discussion on the properties of these entropy bounds. Here is a summary of the results in our paper. We construct upper and lower bounds for the topological entropy of a, a, switch, uh, a general switch nonlinear system. We also construct more conservative upper bounds that require less information about switching. We also consider the case uh, of with diagonal modes and use the additional structure to construct tighter bounds. A feature of most of our entropy bounds is that they only depend on the Jacobian uh, of each individual mode over the omega limit set instead of the entire state space or a compact invariant set. Our results are illustrated numerically by an example of a switched lockdown Volterra ecosystem. For future research, we notice that our bound uh, on the distance between solutions and the volume of the reachable set can be easily adjusted to study the topological entropy of a continuous uh, time nonlinear time variant system. Another future task is to extend the result for the case with diagonal modes to the more general case with commuting modes. We are also interested in establishing informative connections between topological entropy and stability for nonlinear, a switch nonlinear systems and nonlinear time variant systems. Finally, I would like to complete my talk with acknowledgements to our universities and the funding agencies for this paper. Thank you very much for your attention.